So, these two sound cards have their own onboard memory. Now that sounds cool, doesn't it? But is it cool? Let's find out in this video. So this isn't my first video about an x -Fi. I've done a video about the x some time ago and it was this one. It was the ESI uh, Prodigy NX5 NRG which was a really good sound card. And if you haven't seen that video I definitely recommend you watching it because it will, will tell you a lot about the x itself. But this video was uh, is about the uh, creative x because I got a lot of comments uh, below and uh, stating well why don't you do something with the creative cards well this is it and I got myself an extreme music and I got myself this one and this is the fatality pro and both of these cards have the exactly the same DSP on it but there are some differences so let's take a quick look at those specifications So these two cards were f released 15 years ago in 2005. Now these cards were a definite improvement over the pre predecessor which was the Audigy which had some serious issues with sampling. Uh, the Audigy was set at 48 kilohertz and if you had source material that wasn't recorded at 48 kilohertz you would have some issues and degradation in sound quality. Now that was something that the x didn't have. Also, the X5 has a digital signal processor or DSP, a quad-core DSP as a matter of fact, which was one of the most powerful released back then in 2005. One of the major selling points of sound cards was that it would offload the CPU of their sound calculations. Now in the 80s and 90s this may have been a huge selling point, but as CPU power started to increase and dual cores started to appear, sound cards began to lose this selling point. To counter this, Creative slapped on some memory on their sound cards so the CPU wouldn't be bothered with memory requests and decompressing audio files and thus releasing power to games and other tasks. That was the theory at least. Reviews from back then didn't show any improvements and some reviews even showed an increase in CPU cycles needed to transfer to the slower memory on the sound card and via the PCI bus. Also, in-game engine audio engines had to use creative tools for this function to even work. The cheaper X5 models have 2 megabytes of memory, like this Extreme Music. The more expensive, like the Fatality, have 64 megabytes of memory. Now, Creative likes to call this XRAM, but it's just a marketing term to keep in line with the XFI. But it's just regular Micron SD RAM running at 133 megahertz on the more expensive models and 166 megahertz on the more cheaper models. So the cheaper have faster memory, maybe to compensate that it has less memory. Now, although this feature is really cool, it cannot be used anymore because Microsoft killed off sound drivers some time ago with the release of Windows Vista. So sadly, it is now useless. And now for the components used. The x uses the EMU 20K1 or CA20K1 as its digital signal processor. It uses an 8-channel digital analog converter by Sirius Logic, which is called the CS4382. It has a 4-channel stereo multiplexed analog to digital converter by Wolfson Microelectronics, which is the WM8775SEDS. It has two operational amplifiers, one by Japan Radio Company, the JRC4556A, and one by Texas Instruments, which is the MC33078, which is a dual high-speed low-noise operational amplifier. So when I first popped in the Extreme Music into my test bench, um, I saw that Windows was installing the standard drivers, or the WDM drivers. And I was sort of happy and I thought to myself, well, why bother in installing the creative drivers? Let's just start testing with these. 
But then the results showed up, and I will show you a bit later when I show you the Rymark Audio Analyzer results, but those results were horrendous. And I thought, well, maybe we should give, give those creative drivers a try after all. And so I did, and the results were a lot better. Now you also have, of course, the Daniel K drivers, which offer you the same audio quality as the creative drivers, but with the addition of more applications, more sound modifications and DTS and Dolby Digital and all those kind of things. So if you're looking for something uh, over there, try the Daniel K if you just want the, sorry, the clean uh, drivers, the creative drivers in my situation worked just fine and installed great. And this is what happens if you install the regular Windows drivers. You can see some horrendous results in Rightmark Audio Analyzer, especially in the base section. Now, what is interesting that is if you look at the individual results, you can see that the Fatality Pro gets some excellence and even the Extreme Music also gets a really decent score. But in reality, it sounds horrendous because the bass is completely gone as the frequency response graphs show. Thankfully, the results with the frequency response got a lot better after installing the correct drivers. Now, the ratings may have gone down. I mean, the general performance of both cards is now a good, but the frequency response is a lot better. The graph shows that there is a base, there's a middle and a high. What is interesting to see is that it's a, there's a big cutoff point at 20 kilohertz. Now, I was also very interested to see what happens if you enable the CMSS function, which is the creative multi-room speaker setup system stuff. Uh, it, it should enable you to create a more surround sound into a, well, stereo sound. But this is what happens, people, and it just foobars your complete sound system. Stop using it. It doesn't work. So, the listening sessions while playing some games, well, it felt like, especially with the Fatality, like, well, sitting in a nice comfy bath, uh, or returning to the home you've been living in some time ago and haven't been there for some time. It was just such a comfortable listening session, and I felt at home. So I'm a bit biased as towards the quality of the X5 sound card. I must say that the audio quality of the X5 Fatality Pro was notably better than the Xtreme Music, although both cards were still very nice to hear. The basses were there, they were powerful, uh, not overpowered, uh, they were there. Sometimes they were even a bit underpowered. The middle section was great, I could hear my friends excellent and they were just very crisp and naturally there. They weren't overpowered and they weren't too sharp in the high, so in the listening department, this sound card is still really good and I enjoyed using it. At the end, I was so well sort of saddened that I couldn't use it on my modern gaming rig anymore. And well, if I had a PCI slot, I would know what I would choose, the EVGA AU or the X5. But again, there's a lot of bias going there because I really adore the X5. So, and now for the conclusion, well, you may have guessed it, I would still recommend this sound card even 15 years when I started to listen to the sound card. I know I'm a bit biased towards this, these two sound cards, especially the Fatality, which I have over here. Uh, I still think that these two sound cards are really good. I mean, the listening sessions were nice. Uh, the components used, although they are getting rather old, are still very good. There are some more modern sound cards that also use these components, so there's nothing to be ashamed of. I did have some issues with the standard Windows drivers, so if you're planning on using this sound card, don't forget to install the regular Creative drivers or the Daniel K drivers, of course. Uh, but still, these two drivers are more than enough to power your needs. So. With this conclusion, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end, and I would like to see you in the next video. See you then. Bye-bye.